Hey everybody, Mark Agnesi here for Gibson TV. Today, I'm just outside Nashville, Tennessee at one of country music's most legendary venues. Founded in 1925, the Grand Old Opry is the longest running radio show in US history and has gone on to launch the careers of hundreds of country's biggest stars. Since 1974, this place has been its home. Let's go check out the Grand Old Opry. All right, I'm here with Vice President and Executive Producer of the Grand Old Opry, Dan Rogers. Thanks for joining me today, man. You betcha. Welcome to the Grand Old Opry House. This is quite, quite a room. I never get tired of that view. Can we talk just a little bit about the Opry itself? When did the Grand Old Opry start? A lot of people think of the Opry as a place, but it really is a show, and it got its beginnings in November of 1925 as a radio show, right? Which it's the longest running radio show in history, right? By a long stretch, yeah. The world's longest running radio program. This fall of 2021, we will mark the Opry's 5,000th Saturday night broadcast. I mean, that's unheard of. Who are the artists that perform here? And what's the difference between performing here and how someone becomes a member of the Opry? So we'll have eight to 10 to 12 artists on a single show. And again, our hope is that in every show, we're showcasing the new stars, superstars, and legends of country music. Every once in a while, and it truly is every once in a while, sometimes um, it's more than once a year, sometimes it's less than once a year, the Opry and an artist just seem like a perfect fit and it's really all about the relationship that that artist shares with their fans, with fellow Opry members, and with the Opry itself. It's, it's difficult to explain, but I think year after year, the Opry and those artists have gotten it right. How many members does the Opry have at any given time? So over the entire course of Opry history, which of course is now almost 100 years, we've had more than 200 members. And currently there are just over 60 current members of the Opry cast, meaning living, breathing members who can come here on a Tuesday, Friday, Saturday night and sing their hearts out for the folks in those pews and listening around the world. Once you become a member of the Opry, what exactly does that mean for that artist? You know, when Marty Stewart invited Dirk Bentley to become an Opry member, I think he may have said it tongue in cheek, but he said, do you want to marry the Grand Ole Opry? And it's a little like that. It's like joining a family. People in other places, you would think of this as a green room, or you'd hear it called a green room. At the Opry, we love to call it the family room because it's really where... Everybody's just hanging yeah, here, waiting to go on kind of thing. between shows, during shows. Tell me a little bit about this building, because obviously before this place, the Ryman Auditorium was the, the last location of, of the Grand Old Opry. It is the first building built specifically for the Opry. Obviously, the dressing room situation here is a little better than the Ryman. Was there, was there anything else that was this place specifically had to have in order to make it better uh, for the artists? For one, the capacity um, here is twice as large as the Ryman. And um, this is built um, to have multiple shows in a night. We can clear really one audience out at 9 p.m. and be going with a second show at 9.30, both with capacity audiences. And it's air conditioned. And it's air conditioned. Which yeah, is I, a forgot plus. The, I forgot the importance of air conditioning. So, if you are lucky enough to become a Grand Ole Opry member, you um, also are lucky enough to have your own mailbox at the world famous Grand Ole Opry. Jimmy Dickens was the only Opry member whose mailbox wasn't in alphabetical order. And that is truly because he was not tall enough to reach the D, which is awesome. Tell me a little bit about the flood in 2010. Well, it was horrific. How's that for a start? Wait, so this is how high the water was that inside? Is how high the water was inside this building. That's, yeah, above waist high water. And if you don't believe me, you could take a look at this piece of art, which was actually hanging in this spot um, when the Opry House was flooded 
And if you work, look closely, you oh, can wow. see the flood line on that piece as well. Virtually everything on this floor had to be refurbished, um, replaced. The circle of wood was found floating. As I hear it, the folks who saw it when it came in said, why would we bother to save this piece of wood? And upon hearing what that piece of wood was said, oh, of course this has to be salvaged. And what is this piece of wood, by the way? I think of it as the center, the heart, heartbeat of country music. It's a six foot circle of wood taken from the Ryman Auditorium when the Opry moved here in 1974, placed as you see center stage, such that when a Carrie Underwood, a Brad Paisley, a Lauren Elena, a Bill Anderson comes and takes center stage at the Opry, they're standing in the footsteps of the greats that came before them. There's a lot of history on those boards. Man, yeah. I mean, just to, to think even in my lifetime. This is, photo is from August of 2010 when um, we unveiled the refurbished circle, Brad Paisley and Jimmy Dickens. And right after that shot was taken, the circle was placed back here. The Opry really gave Nashville hope. Um, you know, after that flood that um, we were gonna come back stronger than ever. And we did, and we will again. So this is a wagon master. Oh, wow. Uh, room, yeah. You're supposed to say wow you, when you walk into the wagon master. Porter Wagner was a 50 plus year uh, member of the Grand Ole Opry. Wow. This chair with the sequin fringe. That's rad. We called this Friends and Neighbors because it celebrates um, folks really from all walks of life who you may not think of as being Opry fans or so, having any reason to visit. Paul McCartney. You're good. With Dolly Parton. You're just good. Hanging. It's one of my all-time favorite Opry photos. I see all the cameras and, and, and cranes and everything. This is, it kind of always stays set up to film in here. That first week of the pandemic when we didn't have a live audience, we brought um, these uh, cameras that you see in and started filming the show that happens here on Saturday nights for a live stream, which is now seen by a, an average of a million people a week. Last year, overall, the Opry live stream was the number one live stream um, per Polestar magazine. Now, you're the executive producer of the show. You've probably seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of nights in this place. Are there any moments that stick out to you from your, your career here that were just like wow moments that have happened here at the Opry? Oh, so, so many. I love any time someone is surprised with an invitation to join the Opry. That happened to Rhonda Vincent just last Saturday and she stood in that spot and said, when you look at me, know that dreams come true. I'm living proof that dreams come true. It's probably cliche, but every night at the Opry offers something, and, and something amazing. What's it mean to you to be a part of something that is almost 100 years old now, that is, is so important to this city, to country music in general, and to all these artists who, who really want to be a part of it? What's it mean to you? To I think it means the same to me as it does to everybody who comes here on a Saturday night, whether you're singing in front of that microphone, whether you're working that soundboard, or you're eating popcorn and sitting out here in the pews, and that is that you're playing a part in country music history. These plaques represent each of the artists who have been inducted into the Opry over the course of our 95 year history from Uncle Jimmy Thompson on to um, names you would, rec you would recognize. This man is D. Ford Bailey and really without his contributions you could argue the Opry may not have been named the Grand Ole Opry. Um, he was performing and really inspired our founder George D. Hay to say something along the lines of you've been listening to Grand Opera 
but from now on we'll present the Grand Ole Opry. Um, and as you can imagine, and as you can see, the name stuck. stuck. I think even as early as the next week, people were calling the show the Grand Ole Opry. It's the home of country music. You want it to look like um, and feel like home. And that's why all the dressing rooms have a, a different theme that help tell the Opry story, why there are so many great photos back there, just to remind everyone, you're, you're home. the history of the Grand Old Opry, to check out their upcoming schedule of events, or to book a private tour of your own, check them out online at opry.com. That does it for me. I'm Mark Agnesi for Gibson TV. I'll see you guys again next time at another iconic music destination on the next episode of The Scene. Peace.